Okay, and let's do the countdown. Three, two, one. Hey, everybody! This is former WWF Light Heavyweight Champion Gilbert, brother, and you're listening to the Breeding's Guild Podcast. The Cretans Guild is filmed before a live studio audience on Tout. Every time, fucking laugh at the clap. <laughs> like a Pavlovian dog. The clap is funny. I mean, let's face it. <laughs> if you're going to get an STD, get the one that sounds like applause. <laughs> you know, it's like, chlamydia! Yeah, wait, no. No, although chlamydia sounds like a Greek name. I am I am Diana, Princess of Themyscira. This is my cousin, chlamydia. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> You don't want to shake your hand. Just and St- uh, Steve Trevor just slowly backs away. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Puts his hands in his pockets. Like, no, that's all right. That's... Do, you, do you know chlamydia? Well, yes, I was in the army. I, yes, I was <laughs> a member of the Air Force. Me and all the boys know chlamydia. Yes, and her many relatives. I don't believe we've ever met. Oh, yes, we have. Yep. Don't need to make it a repeat showing. We're good. <laughs> all right. So, yeah, well, it's been, what, like three weeks since uh-huh. we last recorded? Might be longer. Not not including microtransgressions. Well, yeah, not not counting microtransgressions. Um, uh, but yeah, it's been three weeks since we recorded an episode of the Creed's Guild podcast, and uh, oh, what innocent times they were back in episode seventy five. Episode seventy five, back when the the society had not crumbled, and we weren't using bottle caps for currency. How about back when we were glibly joking about this whole fucking thing? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well. Yeah. God. Yeah. Like the like. I want a Wayback Machine. It's just a hot <laughs> wall for many reasons. Yeah, well. But the one, at the, the one at the front of my cortex right now is like, three weeks ago, Corey was a bigger dick than he is today. <laughs> <laughs> well, hey, hey, here, here's the thing. The key, the key to, I think the key to a, a pandemic, and I think we're all learning this key to a pandemic, is you have to, <laughs> you have to grow and roll with the punches. Mm-hmm. Um, and as we have learned, uh, this sucks. This sucks. There's no... There's no real two ways to put it. This fucking sucks. Yeah. Um, but uh, we're here to put some mirth in your ear holes and make you guys happy. Uh, I am Jay. Oof. With me, as always, is Bob and Corey. We are, of course, the Cretans Guild. Hope you brought uh, rubbers. Uh, well, or Q-tips. <laughs> we are that podcast shoving way up your nasal cavity to test you. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's us. We are the COVID nineteen test unit. Um, you, you might be inviting us into your ears, but there's no guarantee we're going to fucking leave anytime soon. <laughs> yeah, we're 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 moderately uncomfortable. Yes. But when you're done with us, uh, I'd say you feel better, but chances are you're probably going to feel a little bit worse and like you want to wash yourself. Right. Uh, so we're just the COVID nineteen of podcasts, I guess. Yeah, exactly. I don't know. <laughs> exactly. Um, so that's us. Aren't you glad you brought us in, Podfix? Yeah. We're the COVID nineteen of podcasts. Um. Uh, and that segues nicely into the fact that we are, of course, part of the Podfix Network. That's podfixnetwork.com. Mm-hmm. Uh, a group of great guys and gals that do amazing podcasts and great work. Uh, and then there's us. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. With our, with but, our. Hey, we have the best logo out of all of them. We do have the best logo. Uh, it we, goes without we, saying, yeah. The, easily have the best logo. Thank you, uh, Mr. Tom Solo, for a continued series of just spectacular artwork for the show. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, no, uh, everyone else is really professional and everyone else is, is really solid work and does these great, thoughtful and uh, endearing podcasts. And then there's us with our, our dick jokes and cold open chlamydia. Yeah. Cold opening with chlamydia. Uh, Wonder Woman's cousin who Steve Trevor uh-huh. is intimately familiar with. Uh, I am slightly buzzed. I want to apologize for that tonight. I usually yes. don't drink before shows, but I've worked 50 hours this week. So fuck it. I don't give a shit. You know how we know you're buzzed? You apologized already. More than once. Yes. Yeah, we're four, we're, we're four minutes in. Aren't we? <laughs> it's right. it's going to escalate, and I'm so happy. So, yeah, uh, we're going to here to talk. We're, huh, we're here to talk to you about some <laughs> there stuff. There we go. Uh, we got a couple of topics to talk about, uh, some not so fun ones, and, and some where we're just going to kind of talk about the situation that's going on right now and how we're mm-hmm. coping with it. One of them is 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 not not so much not fun, but kind of surprising as we were all caught off guard today. Yeah, uh, when uh, our good friend of the show Adam let us know that Agents of Shield is having a seventh fucking season. <laughs> uh, um, I mean, we all love Clark Gregg, 
uh, think he's great. My favorite part of the Avengers shared universe, but fuck, I thought that show got canceled three years ago. Yeah, I thought show, that show was dead, buried, and had a mall built on top of its graveside. Yeah, yeah, like, when, once once Peggy died, uh, or, oh, excuse me, once Peggy... Uh, I heard that. <laughs> <laughs> once, you have a great mic. <laughs> I, thank you, I appreciate it. I spent good money on that. Uh <laughs> Once the Peggy Carter show is canceled and then the spinoff for, uh, uh, what's her name, Mockingbird and Not Hawkeye didn't happen. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I kind of figured that that show was on dead legs, but uh, that happened when I lived in Florida, uh-huh. which that is was... like fucking five years ago now. I'm confused. Let me see. I watched up until the end of the Ghost Rider season, which was, they, they that was when they started doing like weird half seasons. Yeah. That was so season the, four. Yeah. The first part of it was uh, the first part of it was cool because it was like a revisitation to the '90s. I know we've already talked about this, um, and then the second part of it was when they did that um, Airsats Man in the High Castle Hydra uh, Madame Hydra cyber fantasy sort of a thing. That particular season had uh, a couple of big hiatuses, so mm-hmm. like an entire season lasts almost all year where they had three major sections. The uh, the Ghost Rider, the LMD, and the Agents of Hydra season. Oh, that's right. The LMD was kind of like the bridge between the two. I yeah. forgot about the LMD episode, the, the LMD part. That was pretty neat because there was all sorts of like a transhumanism, um, you know, sidewalk philosophizing throughout it. And I was like, oh, this is interesting. Like towards the end of it. And then afterwards came the space shit. And I fucking jumped right the hell off at that point. Yeah, that was so that was. Uh, I gave that I gave that three episodes. And that third episode was tough to fucking stomach. And then I was done. That was that was all I knew about Shield. Afterwards, I was like, "Oh, they're going to put it over on Hulu for a bit or, or Disney Plus." Uh, was the rumor afterwards? And then I kind of thought that they were going to ship Disney Plus off of that to carry it, like you know, um, this is a Disney Plus exclusive, Agents of Shield. And I'm like, "That's mm-hmm. that's going to take you to market." That's right. And then afterwards, it was all done. No, there's one more season left, and it's airing on ABC. And it's airing on ABC. Yeah. It's on it's on national television. And fuck, I might have to watch it because. Well. Yeah, because yeah. somebody who's in it. Yeah, because oh, what, so, huh? tell me what's going on. I didn't read the article. I just saw. I was like, why? Like, why is this coming back? They're bringing back Peggy Carter. Uh, yep. Oh, come on. It's uh, it's taking place in the forties. So, wait, time travel? I don't know, dude. How the fuck did they end up in about in space? I mean, okay, it was in space in the future, not like the first time where they fought that uh, the hive, you know, the sea lister from the yeah. comic books. All right, that was whatever. But then they ended up in space again, but it was in space in the future after Quake blew up the Earth or something like that. And then they, I guess they returned at some point. There was a lot of, uh, you know, God in the Machine style shenanigans happening. Yeah, that was season five. And I think I made five or six episodes in. I was like, I can't take this anymore. This isn't going anywhere. This is stupid. Just where are the where are the supervillains, for God's sake? Well, is that is that the season where, uh, what's her name, the British girl gets sent to another planet? No, that was season three. That was season I three believe. when they were going up that's, against. That's when I tapped out. Oh yeah, because like when that happened, I was like, "No, we're done here. I, I don't." They, they've made everyone just thoroughly unlikable. Like I'm, I'm done. Oh, I don't care. oh, if you thought that they hit the uh, the unlikable range at that point, <laughs> five will do you good. <laughs> five will make you fucking sick. Well, if it ever shows up on Disney Plus, I'll I will probably watch it at that point. But mm, maybe I know it's on Netflix right now, and it's like uh, I'm good. I can't be asked up to open up Netflix. There's nothing on that fucking <laughs> service I give a shit about anymore. Like I I just pay them seventeen dollars a month for the sake of spending seventeen dollars a month. I think <laughs> once Peacock starts up, uh-huh. I'm probably done. Oh like, yeah, because I I watch Parks and Rec. In mm-hmm. the office, and that's fucking it. Like I, I got no, I have no reason to have that service anymore. It's just, it just sits on my my streaming services or my my subscription services, and like, oh yeah, I'll just pay them. I don't care. So you basically just have Netflix on retainer, kinda, in case something good shows. Like up. a dentist, okay? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like was gonna drop Netflix, and then the Marvel shows came out. Mm-hmm. And I was like, well, these are fucking great. I'm not getting rid of it. These are spectacular. Notes. <laughs> Narrator says this was before <laughs> Iron Fist. <laughs> Yo, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, and I didn't make it through Defenders either. Like I, I just I, uh, no, yeah. couldn't do it. Uh, and, and then you know they they shit can the Netflix shows or the mm-hmm. Netflix Marvel shows, and I was like, well, what the fuck do I watch? I watch NBC properties on here. That's it. Nothing else. It's it's a struggle right now. Uh, there, there's a there's a couple of uh, there's a couple of enticing Netflix originals and stuff. And there's you know of course Black Mirror and whatever the fuck else. And 
to my memory, it's still one of the only streaming services that has the Twilight Zone on it, except for the CBS one, maybe. Mm -hmm. Not the new one, but the classic one, the old one. Yeah, they've got both of them on there. Oh, nice. Okay, I didn't know that. Um, well, uh, I mean, and next to that, I, I do find stuff every once in a while that will pop on for a coconut smile and then, like, you know, hop off. Like, this month they bought they brought in a Drive, which I'd been wanting to see for a couple of years, but never had. I didn't want to rent it off of, you know, Prime or anything because I'm spoiled like that. But, um, yeah. How mm, how much are these, like, penny ante ass problems going to amount to in a couple of months? I hope still a much. I, still, I hope we're still <laughs> bitching about this stuff come, like, the end of summer, and we're not all, like, pallid and sweating and, like, fighting over loaves of bread and shit. <laughs> well, it, it's kind of like, it, it's good to have it and not need it, than need it and not have it. What, Netflix? Yeah, yeah. Well, but like I said, it was... It, every, every once in a while, I still find some stuff on there to watch. I will say, I would, the, the, the blank that made us, you know, either movies or toys, those those are things I really enjoy on Netflix. I will those say that. Cool. And then, yeah. I'm happy to subscribe to those just because... I want them to have my money to make more shit like that. And the originals that they do have are still good. Yeah, and the, but then there's fu they put out fucking garbage like Tiger King, which apparently I'm culturally inept because I don't see the appeal of it. Everyone <laughs> on my fucking timeline is talking about the goddamn thing. Uh, I don't see the appeal in it because I'm a – well, it's not – there's no appeal. It's just that during my childhood, I kind of lived that uh, without <laughs> the big cats. They, let's, <laughs> let's swap out the giant cats for the giant dogs. And that was pretty much, you know, one side of my family. That was, you know, Christmas and Thanksgiving, going out pigeon hunting and saying the, like, worst stuff we can think of to say to each other. Um, without the murder, though, there's very little murder happening in my family, which is great. There's a couple of attempted murders. <laughs> I, I like, that you, say, point. I like yeah. that you say very little murder and not no murder. Yeah, well, <laughs> uh, here's a couple of things I can't really talk about, you know, for the sake of decorum. On oh, this sure, show. sure. And I don't. By know, the way, don't... by the way, what kind of a dick am I to bring up decorum on this fucking podcast? <laughs> 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 so there are a couple of uh, originals that are still, you know, like watchworthy. Like I know the last season of Stranger Things, people are kind of like hot and cold on, but I still like it. Uh, I forgot about Stranger Things, um, and I'm looking forward to four because it's going to be like all Cold War. Supernatural shenanigans now. Is there a release date for that? No. No, it's just teasers right I, now. I figured it'd be somewhere around 4th of July like last year's was. Well, everything's shut down right now. They, they haven't, uh, they haven't yeah. completed filming. So Yeah. Um, and the funny thing with the Stranger Things is that they try to vie for like um, uh, narrative-appropriate seasonal releases, which I think is pretty cool. Yeah. Like when uh, Season 2 came out, it came out around Halloween. <laughs> show took place around Halloween. Mm. Season 3 came out. It took place around oh, the summer. Yeah. So they launched it in July, um, or wherever. Uh, but uh, there was another original that just dropped recently that I was like on fucking. I was like all, all just all jazzed to uh, hear news about it, and the trailer was great. But the, the thing is that like production for this particular project had been like through so many up and downs. It was supposed to be on like supposed to be on net network TV, then it was supposed to be on Hulu, and then Hulu dropped it, and then it was supposed to go somewhere else, and nobody would pick it up, and then it finally landed on Netflix, and it was the long-awaited lock and key lock and key tv yeah. show yep not close to the same thing like if you were no. a big fan of the comics uh i gave that two and a half actually i did give it three but i spent like the last half of the third episode just kind of knocking them back by that point i didn't really care what happened but um whew. some people will enjoy it my mom enjoyed it she liked the hell out of it because it reminded her of like classic spielberg stuff but i was like uh well you haven't read the comics and if you were like, if you're like, were completely mind blown uh, by that uh, by that series, there's going to be so much less for you to come back to in this show. That sucks because they they did really well with Umbrella Academy, which oh shit, which I haven't seen. But that's a different that's a different production company, right? Oh, that I don't know. But I, I just mean from the perspective of well, this is a Netflix thing, so. Oh uh, well, true, yeah. But Stranger Things is a different production company from all those, and we know that uh, the Marvel stuff is a uh, much. I mean, that's basically just Disney. Mm -hmm. That's uh, that's uh, that's Disney's basement crew. <laughs> <laughs> not to be an asshole. I mean, there are people on there that are like proud of the work that they've done, but I'm pretty sure that Scott Buck was fucking not one of them. <laughs> <laughs> I loved Umbrella Academy. You you really should see that. Umbrella Academy is really good. I'm holding out on that one for like the worst of reasons. I really want to read the comics first. Because uh, people have been, like, on me to read them for, for like, the longest time. And I have, like, so many piss-weak excuses for not doing it. Most of them are like, uh, I just haven't gotten it off of Amazon yet or whatever. But, uh, yeah, uh, that's, that should be happening. 
But that's at least one reason for you to be keeping Netflix around, isn't it? It is. It is. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that's and that's honestly what it kind of boils down to is the stuff that I enjoy is stuff I really enjoy. Yeah. Yeah. You know, there, there's stuff I really, really, really like that they do, but 99.9% of the shit they produce, I'm just like, I don't care. It's no good for discovery anymore. That's the thing it's that kind of gets me about it. Because, yeah, I mean, you, you could be like... Hulu's a little bit of this too, but you could be like uh, at midnight. One of the one of the fa- things that I love that I used to love doing is get a bowl of cereal, sit your ass down on the couch, insomnia time, cruise Netflix, look for something ancient that you've not encountered yet, you know. And this is how I'd find like a lot of obscure, uh, not obscure and wires, but kind of like you know basement, like budget and wires mm-hmm. that there aren't any DVD prints of or anything. Hulu was like that too because they had like uh, like a lot of the um, the pre code. Um, uh, royalty free stuff and they also had the criterion collection which was which is awesome that was just like a cornucopia of good shit to dive into but you could just play roulette on it and it would be like all right we've got uh millennium well this looks pretty cheesy let's see what it is Ooh, didn't think it would be that much cheese but you know what <laughs> i'm glad i found something new tonight they don't have that anymore even that. No, it's like I look at my my my, my queue on Netflix, which mm-hmm. no one fucking uses anymore. But um, <laughs> like I, I had added so much shit to that back, you know, 10 years ago at this point. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, going back to look at it now, it's like we have <clears> these <throat> nine stand up specials on here that you've watched 180 times. Would you like to watch that again? No, not that's really. the most pointless category on, the, on on any streaming service. It's like, do you want to watch this again? Motherfucker. <laughs> If I want to watch that again, I will search for it, and then I will be disappointed because it won't be on the service anymore. <laughs> I've only I've only done that with like maybe ten, like a handful of movies, and it's like, well, this was on there for about two. That was why I watched Dread the other night because Dread was on Netflix for about five months one year, and I thought it was going to be on there for a while. I thought it was going to stick around for like as long as. Uh, Stonehurst Asylum has. Wow, that's a fucking lifer. I think that one's so old that it's got tenure. But I thought, I thought Dread was going to be the same way. And it was like, well, no, it's not. Must have been because it was a good movie. I guess so. How, how was it, by the way? Which, by the way, yeah, it was a fucking good movie. <laughs> yeah. Right. It was awesome. It was like a reverse uh, Siege movie, which I haven't seen in like a long time. Anything like that. I mean, as far as like aesthetic goes, uh, Urban tried to like scowl it up as hard as he could. Hit the bottom of his face must have been like aching for miles after he was done shooting that thing. <laughs> um, because unfortunately, Sylvester Stallone, yeah, I know part of his contract is like, hey, you got to see this. Because you've got Sylvester Stallone in your movie, and it was a very '90s sort of a move to pull. Yeah. But when you put the helmet on him, yeah, he was he was a spitting image for a Carlos Esquire uh, drawing, and it was it was quite, kind of cool to see. Unfortunately, that movie made a giant sucking sound for like 90 minutes straight, which is kind of why I like it. <laughs> which is kind of why it's a diggable planet. No, okay, okay, not let, let, let's be uh, not a giant sucking sound. Sandra Bullock was in it. It was uh, it was Diane Lane for that one. Remember, they tr- they basically tried to remake Demolition Man, but with yeah. the Dread property. Oh, that's you know? right. Sandra Bullock was in Demolition Man. Yeah, she was in Demolition Man. See, Sorry, you're thinking of, I got you're my s- futuristic Sylvester Stallone movies crossed. I apologize. Yeah, I know. <laughs> when you're rifling through the uh, cyberpunk dystopia deck of all the movies that came out in the '90s, which, by the way, I saw another one a couple of nights ago. Two of them stick out because they both have Sylvester Stallone in them. It's easy to get them confused, and they do follow like a formula too. The thing is, is that you're thinking of the unironically good one, yeah. and and I'm thinking of the uh, uh, the uh, what can I? How can we put this? The um, deliciously ironically good one. The deliciously ironically good one. Yeah, I like to. It's it's like the onion rings of movies. Is it not, like the onion rings of movies or the funions of movies? The funions of movies. <laughs> yes, yes, that's perfect. It's basically just like trash snack food, but you know you'll love it for X set of reasons anyway. Sure. Which okay? Which one was was uh, Rob Schneider in? Uh, Dem- uh, he was in both. He was in both. Yes. Wait. Oh yeah, he was. Yes. <laughs> was he was was he Sylvester Stallone's sidekick in the nineties? Like 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 I said, Dread was them trying to do Demolition Man again. Okay. I I don't know why. I think maybe they had trouble putting the crew of the original. That could have been. No, none of it makes sense. <laughs> I'm sorry. Hollywood in the 90s was a very strange and volatile place to be. That's tr- That's very true. Very yeah. true. Uh, speaking of strange and weird places, let's talk about the WWE. Oh, shit. Yes. Ugh. Man. Uh, so remember the part where I said this, we're, we're going to have uh, a not so feel good story. Yeah, this is that one. Right. Um, so uh, for, th- for those of you that are either too young to remember this or 
uh, new to pro wrestling, just discovering it, you know, either, you know, via AEW or whatever. Back in the day, every spring after WrestleMania, WWE used to do just mass layoffs. People would be released from contracts. There was always Black Friday. Uh, and it was, oh, where's this person going to go? Is he going to show up in TNA now? What's what's uh, what's Dust Goldie doing in the in the Impact Zone? You know, it's, uh, and, and it got to the point where it was it was a regular thing, and you know, like clockwork, you could expect it the week after Mania, it was going to happen, happen mm-hmm. every year, except for the last few years, except for about the last five or six years, it's all of a sudden kind of eased up. A lot of that can be attributed to the fact that WWE is. Uh, holding on to talent. They're keeping Mm -hmm. talent under wraps and paying them to not work, uh, which seems like a terrible decision to me, but Hey, you know, I, I'm not a billionaire. I don't Mm -hmm. know. Uh, (laughs) uh, but we kind of got lulled in this false sense of security where no one had gotten really released for the, for a while. Yeah. Now, earlier this week we had, uh, the revival were released, which, uh, shocked, honestly should have shocked nobody. Yeah. They've been asking for 18 months for their contract. They've been asking for a release for 18 months, uh, so good for them. Glad they got the release. Uh, I look forward to them fighting the Young Bucks. So yesterday, WWE, despite having, uh, and and I actually did an update in the rundown because I've been doing some research on this, uh, it was initially reported that they had $500 million uh, in funds for emergency debt protection. Uh, it's actually $90 million, which I know that's, <laughs> that's still an astronomical fucking amount of money, but when you compare the two of them, it's a four hundred and ten million dollar difference. Even with just ninety million, they're still going to make a profit for the year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Before this week happened, yeah, they they could not run a live event and not sell any merchandise this year, and they're still going to make a profit. But with all that said, uh, and remember, this is our false sense of security coming into play here. Uh, a week after WrestleMania, boy fucking howdy did the did the axe swing at the WWE yesterday. <sighs> Uh, and a lot of this has to do with uh, the shit going on in the world right now with COVID-19. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's no sense in keeping on a massive production crew when you're not traveling for shows. I, From from a completely heartless business perspective, I look at it and I say, yeah, that decision makes sense. But from a perspective of, well, I'm a human being, that sucks ass. Yeah. And I know some camera guys have lost their job with this company. Yeah. It, it's It's awful. It's it's truly awful, and I understand that you don't need a massive crew when, for the foreseeable future, you are probably going to be filming empty arena shows at the Performance Center. You only need a crew of – a skeleton crew, really. Let's be honest. Yeah. To to see the list of people that were let go, like the, the – the, just just looking at off-air people, the, the producers that were let go and, – and I don't know anyone in the television industry, so I'm only going with the producers that were announced – they let go Billy Kidman, Mike Rotunda, Fit Finley, Pat Buck, Scott Armstrong, Scott Armstrong, Sarah Stock, Shane Helms, and Lance Storm. They were furloughed yesterday. That furlough extends through July 1st, at which point they are scheduled to come back. Now, these are the, the people who were former wrestlers who are well-known backstage. And yeah. there's a huge handful of people that, obviously, we've never heard of who have also yeah. been furloughed. Yeah, like, there are people, like, there was a digital interviewer for NXT named Josiah Williams, who did, uh, he was the guy that wrapped uh, Adam Cole out to the ring. Um, he was yeah. let go. Uh, a bunch of other people were let go. Like, Serena Deeb was one of the trainers at the Performance Center. She was let go. Some other folks as well. God. That sucks. That really sucks, because a lot of those people are incredibly talented, uh, very good road agents, very good producers, and I hope that they all get their jobs back. Um, specifically, you know, people like Fit Finley, who's been there yeah. for fucking ever. Uh, Shane Helms, who just came back. Lance Storm, who just got hired three months ago. After he closed his school. Yeah. Now, that sucks. But, I mean, let's be honest, the sizzle is the are the wrestlers, the performers, the people that are seen every week that are, well in theory, are seen every week if they're actually used on television. <laughs> and the list of people that were released is pretty astronomical. Uh, Aiden English was let go. Now, Aiden hadn't wrestled in ages. He was just doing commentary on 205 Live. Mm-hmm. Uh, still sucks, because the guy was super talented. Um, yep. Kurt Hawkins and Zack Ryder were let go. Guys who just won the tag titles last year at WrestleMania. Uh, Drake Maverick, who has been consistently one of the funniest guys in WWE for two years now, was let go. EC3 was let go, but Honestly, that's probably he, he best for him. It it's best yeah. for him. Uh, Epico and Primo Cologne were let go, and they haven't worked in two years, something like that. Yeah, mostly house shows. Yeah, Eric Young was let go, who had been used sparingly on the main roster and had been doing a lot of producer work. Shocking me, like the most shocking name on here for me, outside of Zack Ryder, uh, is Heath Slater. That was uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, because Slater 
to me, felt like a lifer. You know, uh-huh. he had been there through thick and thin. This is a guy that did not care that he was a jobber. He was happy to go out and get beat. Yeah. Uh, he just wanted some wanted some TV time every once in a while. He's got kids. Yeah. <laughs> in, <laughs> indeed. Uh, Carl Anderson and Luke Gallows were let go, so the OC were let go. That one was shocking to me. It was to me as well, especially after the renegotiation of the new contract that they just went through and, and making big money. Um, yeah. But also, they just went through a negotiation to make big money. That's... That's a big target when it comes time to cut money. That's that's uh, true, yeah. Kurt Angle was let go. Didn't know Kurt Angle was still considered an on-air talent. He I, was doing a lot of backstage yeah, stuff. Yeah, he was, he was doing producer work. Uh, Leo Rush was let go. Who was getting a big push. He was, yeah. Uh, Mike Chioda was let go. Referee Mike Chioda, who'd been there since 1988. God damn, really? Yep. Yeah. Mike and Maurice, He was the most senior referee, I think. Yes, he was. Uh, Mike Bennett and Maria Canellis were let go. Um, I, I, I've got a, I've got a hunch that they're one of the people that are going to come back. No way. Jose was let go. Uh, Rowan was let go. I mean, man, that mechanical spider killed him. <laughs> that's, that's too bad. Uh, I'm, I'm saving a name for last. I'm going to skip one here on the list. Uh, Sarah Logan mm-hmm. was let go who I am. I'm am shocked. She was let go. Uh, because all that does is give AEW talent to make their weakest division stronger. But the biggest name, I think, on the list that was let go is Rusev. Yeah. His contract was coming up, and he was refusing to sign at this point. Yeah, he, he he's hinted at wanting out for a while. Uh, so I think uh, you're going to see Monster Rusev in Japan probably mm-hmm. sooner than later. Uh, and great for him. I'm happy for him. I hope he makes millions and millions of dollars, and uh, I will always be a fan of Rusev. Uh, I'll be a fan of a lot of these guys for a long time. Uh, it sucks that these people were let go. It always sucks when, when people lose their job, uh, but especially when they're performers that, you know, they still make us feel like little kids and we get to watch them. Um, even though we're older, I think, than everyone on this list except Kurt Angle. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> if I'm going to an entertainment speculation and, and I want to... I wanna, uh, speculate a little bit on who I think is going to come back. I'm pretty sure Drake Maverick's coming back. I would be surprised if he didn't. Uh, I would be surprised if Slater didn't come back. I think the Canellises will come back and probably no way Jose, but I think that's about it. I think Sarah Logan might come back because her husband still works for the company. That's true. Yeah, he's one of the Viking Raiders. That's a good point. Um, I would be surprised if Ryder doesn't doesn't come back eventually, but I think he ends up in AEW in the, in the short term mm-hmm. because he and Cody are such good friends. Um, and Cody has said for over a year now that the one guy he would take from WWE would be Zack Ryder. Uh, which, if you've seen Zack Ryder work, kind of a weird statement to make. <laughs> I mean, Zack's a great guy, but he's, I mean, he's not a great ring worker. He's got about four moves. He, he's he got some good ideas. I mean, the, the what was it, the inter, Internet Championship? Yeah, the Internet Championship and the, the Z Long Island Ice Story or ice, something like that, whatever. Uh, <laughs> It was, it's so memorable we don't remember. Yeah, it's so remember I can't remember. That's great. Uh, yeah, I, I would be surprised if he doesn't come back eventually. But you know, he could also just end up as a lifer in AEW now. I mean, he's he's only thirty two years old. There's I saw some speculation that uh, I don't know if you guys saw the the promo Drake Maverick cut. Oh God, on his Twitter account. Yeah, I was crying. That was not fun to watch. Uh, is very hard to to take a look at because I mean it, it's you never want to see someone else cry. And the dude was the dude was done. He was slayed, or slain. But he's going to apparently be working uh, some dates still for the cruiserweight tournament that they've got going on. There's some speculation that his is a work. Oh, that'd be shitty. Yeah, I was, I was going to ask why you use the terminology "cut a promo" because he did cut a promo. This was after the announcement, right? It was after the announcement. Okay. It was a promo where he was saying how sad he was that he was let go, but he was going to make the most of his opportunity with the matches he has left. He's still going to. Oh, he's he's, still wrestling. He's still wrestling the matches he has left in this cruiserweight tournament, you know, et cetera, et cetera. And I'm like, Uh, oh yeah, the the NXT guys were given 30 days of pay, and then they're then they're out. But so main roster guys obviously have their 90 day no complete no compete cause, but they're still getting paid through it. NXT is getting a 30 day no compete, so. That kind of is both a blessing and a curse, I guess. I mean, if this was not the current situation we're in, I think it would be great for them because they'd be able to get work real fast. Uh, but no one's fucking wrestling right now. Like, it's well, it's it, WWE and AEW, and that's it. I mean, in the, in the realm of, like, creating um, uh, contact situations, I'm kind of surprised that there are still even, like, shows being held right now. I'm, I'm fucking floored that they are. Yeah. Well, when your friend is Trump you and you have money, it's easy to... Right. Yeah, grease the wheels. Yeah. Now the 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 guy who's the head of the the 
uh, disease board or whatever he is, Dr. Fauci, the guy who actually seems to actually know what the fuck he's talking about, mm -hmm. uh, said yesterday or today uh, that sports were okay to come back, but test uh, players had to be tested daily and there couldn't be anyone in the stands. I, I don't know. I, I'm of I'm of two minds of it. I mean, personally, I mean, selfishly, yeah, I would love to see sports on TV again. But realistically, I look at it and say, no, that's a terrible idea. Yeah, I don't want these people fucking dying. Mm -hmm. Like, <laughs> like even sports, I don't like. Like, I love what NASCAR is doing right now. I love that they're doing the E League and letting these guys race video game NASCAR on TV. That's easy to do, though. I mean, once you if you've been paying attention to the esports scene for the last <laughs> I don't know decade. Mm -hmm. That it's had like mainstream traffic, that's that's the natural course of progression for this stuff. Yeah, contact free sports, fucking, a, it already <laughs> makes money. Yeah, you know. Yeah, it, so some of these guys like Kyle Lowry mm -hmm. forget that they're Mike, <laughs> and now he, he doesn't have a job now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he was oh, he was whoops. fired. He, uh, he dropped he he dropped a bit of a racial slur. I, it, I, okay, I should take that back. He dropped the big racial slur. <laughs> Whoa! Oh, he had a, he yeah. had a heated gaming moment. Is that what happened? Yep. Yeah. Yep. That's exactly oh, what it was. It. <laughs> yep. He sure did stick his foot right in his ass. Oh. Uh, not even his mouth. Right, right past his mouth. Right back around <laughs> to his ass. You uh, stuck it so far up his ass. He now has he now has toes for teeth. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Uh, so, outside of that, however, I do love that NASCAR is doing that. I like mm -hmm. the uh, I like the shit the NBA is doing with the the horse competition. So they're they're getting two players to, uh -huh. to do a live stream, and they play horse. So they did one. Uh, one of the guys from the the Portland Trailblazers huh. played against Paul Pierce, who used to play for the Celtics, uh, <laughs> and he fucking mopped the floor with Pierce. It was great. Like he beat him five nothing, uh, like a dead horse. <laughs> yeah, like a dead horse exactly. <laughs> uh, and I think that's great. Like I, <laughs> you know, one of the one of the things that I think is is good about the situation is we're seeing some creativity in how things are handled. Mm. Shit like horse for the NBA. That's fantastic. That's wonderful. Why is nobody playing basketball? Well, because that still has a bunch of players on the field. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah. damn it. <laughs> you and your facts and logic. Um, but yeah, like it's, I, I just think there's creatively there's stuff that can come out of this that is going to be good in the long run for society and for our entertainment. And really that's, that's a good thing. Um, please, please come back. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, not for my own entertainment, but so I have a job. Uh, I'd, yeah. I, I'd like to see uh, I'd like to see the e leagues grow uh, personally. Yeah, so we can start seeing more uh, home based industries get uh, uh, get recognition as well. I'll agree with that. So, so real quick uh, before we get on to the big discussion point of the show, uh, I want you all to take a, take this opportunity uh, to to pause the show for a second, open your door or your window, take a great big deep breath of fresh air. Put on some soothing music. Put on some deodorant. Put on some fucking... <laughs> take a shower. Yeah. Uh, comb your fucking hair. Dudes, please shave. Gals, please shave. Because <laughs> we all need to. We all need to. We all look like shit. We all smell like shit. Mm -hmm. uh, please wash your hands. If you have to leave the house, wear gloves, wear a mask. Take care of yourself. Carry some Clorox wipes with you. Make sure you're cleaning your shit. And if you're dirty... Go take a bath. <laughs> Go see a doctor. <laughs> Don't take your shoes off. Don't do that. But really, honestly, guys, just please take care of yourselves. Be safe. Be healthy. Mm -hmm. uh, and we'll be right back. Hey, everyone. This is Toph, host of Gravity Beard, a podcast featuring interviews and discussions on a wide range of topics. In each episode, I'll either interview a special guest or we'll convene our typical Algonquin roundtable of brilliant minds. Occasionally, we'll even be joined by the host of one of your other favorite podcasts. Then every other week, my buddy Adam stops by for an installment of This Week Today. Whatever we do each week, we promise you'll be entertained. You can find Gravity Beard on Podbean, Apple Podcasts, or anywhere else quality podcasts are sold. And you can always find us and other indie pods in the Underdog Podcast community on Facebook. We're also a member of the Podfix Network. Come check us out. Gravity Beard. It's what your ears will want to be listening to. All right, guys. Uh, we are back now. We're going to talk about our big topic. Uh, and our topic, uh, and again, thank you to Podfix for just completely ignoring all the content we have on this show. Uh, and just being <laughs> happy that we're part of the network. What are because... you dying over, Corey? No, I uh, stepped on something over here and I'm like, what? 
Oh, I thought you were hunched over trying to corpse in a laugh. I no, thought, that's what I thought you were doing, too. I was like, wow, I, I didn't think that was that funny. But okay. No, no, <laughs> Bob, I don't corpse. You know this. That's I couldn't true. corpse if somebody fucking dared me to. It always escapes. So, so the topic today... Uh, and this is a timely one, is uh, how the fuck we have kept from going insane during this quarantine. Uh, you know, basically, you know, what stuff... Yeah, Bob looks like Mikey Whipwreck. Uh, I, th- I think you're uh, speaking for two of us <laughs> at the moment. <laughs> sure. Uh, I've been very busy. I haven't had a whole lot of time to do a bunch of stuff. But mm-hmm. uh, So we're going to talk about some stuff that we've discovered, you know, video games, books, shows, movies, creative endeavors, hobbies... Uh, anything like that? We, well, we can we can kick the uh, the uh, pandemic crutch out of the way uh, right now. Um, kind of an auspicious uh, launch date for our Animal Crossing. It just happened to be uh, <laughs> right when everything was kind of going to shit, and everybody had to stay home, or everyone was and you know giving leave. God, you know what? Yeah. I, I, I will say yes, auspicious, mm-hmm. but also holy shit, fucking good. Yeah, uh, <laughs> it's it's been a nerve salve for so many people. It, it really has. Like the, yeah. the ability to be like me sitting at work, uh, and you know the nice thing about my work right now is they have said, "Hey, if you're stressed, if something's bothering you, just take some time. Don't don't even worry about it. Just yep. put up a, put put up a status on Slack and say, "Hey, going slightly mad." Uh, <laughs> yes, <laughs> which I've I've used. I'm not going to lie. Uh, like two days ago, I, I messaged my manager and I said, hey, I'm going to take the rest of the day off. I know it's nine o'clock in the morning and I just started a half hour ago, but I can't fucking do this today. Mm-hmm. And she was cool with it. That's awesome. Animal Crossing has been great. And it's like the perfect game for this scenario, too, with everything going on. I'm just going to sit down. I'm going to do some fishing, which is probably the most stressful part of that entire game, trying to <laughs> catch a, a bass or not catch a bass or something. How, how many have you been able to do in a row? How many what? Uh, fish have you caught in a row to try to get that one, uh, the one Nook Miles card? I haven't been keeping track because the last two weeks I've been catching nothing but eggs in the water. Oh, yeah. God, I'm so happy that fucking yeah, event is over yeah, with. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fuck you, Zipper T Bunny. Uh, <laughs> so, all right. So, outside of Animal Crossing, and Animal Crossing is great because it mm-hmm. is some semblance of normalcy. I think in all of our lives because we're all kind oh, of missing. As as silly as it sounds, we're all missing routine right now. Yeah. And, you know, I'm fortunate that I my, my job is work from home, so nothing's really changed for me besides the fact that I now have coworkers. Mm-hmm. Uh, and one of them's 11 and surly. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that, that's really the only thing that's altered for me now is is that I have coworkers. But uh-huh. um, it's, it's nice to have Animal Crossing and be like, hey, I need to do some chores. All right, let me go fucking into Animal Crossing and do some yeah. chores because I'm not doing anything oh. at home. Mm-hmm. Like, it's, Let me go dig up some fossils. <laughs> I gotta go catch some fucking clams to, to make one piece of bait at a time. Yeah. Please patch that shit. <laughs> now, Jay, you and your wife have different switches, so you and yes. her have different islands. Correct. I'm sharing an island with my whole family. I'm so sorry. That battle, that daily battle <laughs> over fossils, that's a fucking war. <laughs> Oh. Be- whoever can get on first tries to claim the the most amount of fossils. Like, no, you need to dig one, leave the others. The best decision we have made is getting a switch for everyone in our house. Just flat out, the best thing we've ever done is making sure we all have our own switch. I didn't know that. There like, there's only like a, a like a, a like a set enumeration for the entire household on one switch. One uh, is- I- one island per switch, four fossils per island per day. So if you share one island, then that's only four fossils between everybody in one house. Yep. Now, so, each of us get our own money rock, but as fossils go, nope, that's it. Just four a day. So it becomes like a political Mel Fisher-style uh, Mel, Mel Fisher style uh, domination battle. Oh, there, there have been wars fought over fossils so far in <laughs> wow. this household. Okay, all right. Since, since like, I'm starting to, like, since my cup runneth over with fossils right now, if you got any, or if you need any, let me know. I can be the fencer. All right. <laughs> well, we're digging them up to give to, in the first, and at least everybody is in a, a, in unison agreement. It's like, mm-hmm. all right, if you dig one up, give it to the museum. If he, if it's already there, then you can sell it. But the whole thing, the fossils are like the most expensive thing. Yeah, so. Robbie's running a fossil fencing racket now, isn't he? He's completely going behind <laughs> everybody's back, and he's like, I'm not even skipping. I'm not even going to the museum. Fuck blathers. Fuck y'all. <laughs> This is cash mint. He's he's no. got a he's got a Twitch stream where he auctions off 
<laughs> fucking fossils on the black market. Captain Rob's actually pretty good about it. It's Michael who's going around shaking all the money trees and taking everything for himself. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you little shit. Uh, gangster uh, moves. That's, that's some fucking garbage right there. So outside of Animal Crossing, what have you guys been playing? Uh, I've been rediscovering uh, solo play board games the uh, last couple of weeks. Nice. Because our jobs entail mostly sitting at the monitor. And um, when we get done with our jobs, we sit at the monitor some more. <laughs> and the last couple of weeks seems like a 24-hour activity. Not going to lie to you. Uh, the first couple of days, my eyes were like fucking hurting. Because <laughs> uh, semblance is – or excuse me, uh, temperance is not my name. Um so I was like, okay, I gotta, I gotta step away from these, these, uh, these indelibly harmful devices for at least a couple of hours at a time. So I started reading books and a whole lot. Um, I'm kind of a slow reader, so I don't really have anything to talk about there. I've like wormed through uh, uh, you know, Lock and Key, which we already talked about, and I'm uh, going through um, the Infinity Bridge and um, the Glass Yay! Hammer right now. Finally, finally getting onto the Infinity Bridge and finally finishing the Glass Hammer, which is great because it's like a uh, it's a speculative fiction uh, one two. It's like steampunk, boom, cyberpunk, pow, come back to us. Um, but uh, I've been trying to get into uh, solo. Um, what I called on Instagram solo shakedown, which unfortunately I kind of neglected for the last week because other shit was distracting me and I've been getting really bad sleep due to drama. Um, <laughs> uh, yes. Plenty of that to go around. <clears throat> yeah, but uh, I've been uh, playing uh, Hit Z Road, which I actually kind of play every once in a while anyway because it's really easy to set up and uh, really easy. It's got a very, it's not like an easy rule set to contain, but it's a very narrow rule set. So it's like, okay, I do these things and. There's like one or two things to remember. Um, after that, I uh, tried unsuccessfully to create a single player scenario for Hero Quest, which, if you remember that from like way back in the day, I'm pretty sure if you follow Dinosaur Dracula, you know what Hero Quest is. Um, failed miserably. But that made me think about a single player like Dungeon Crawler style game. So uh, Ghostbusters gave that another couple of goes, but that can only take you so far. And uh, flick them up. Uh, Dead of Winter, which I fucking love, but I don't want to like drill through that immediately. It's, it's a pretty good time. That's awesome. Bob, you playing it? You playing any other games? Games? Uh, I have Witcher Three just collecting dust back here because Animal Crossing's been, uh, as far as my gaming, that's basically it. I've more or less have been watching a lot of stuff. A uh, lot of stuff on, Ooh. shockingly enough, on my Netflix, I've been watching because I've noticed Netflix <laughs> has doubled. Oh, sorry. Well, <laughs> Netflix has doubled down on the anime like it, tenfold. It is good for anime now. Uh, weirdly enough, yeah. Some of it, it was like, oh, I've been wanting to watch that, and some of it's like, I don't know what this is, and I know just based on the thumbnail, I'm not need to watch this while the kids are up. <laughs> <laughs> there's a there's a couple of shows I do want to talk about. Uh, first one was season two of High Score Girl, which was just like tear out my heart and squeeze it to death. I hate how good that anime is. I know it's because it's, I want to suggest it to so many people, but it's not only anime, which is enough of a barrier to a barrier to, uh, to, invi to invitation, but like, it's a very, you, it's a very different looking one. And the topic or the subject matter is, is niche in and of itself. You know, the arcade scene in the nineties. So it's yeah. like, okay, well, none of these normies are going to get into it. Let them suffer in silence. They'll yeah. learn eventually. <laughs> I mean, it's one of the few shows I was able to watch with my boys. Mm -hmm. uh, another one being a show called Love, Chibono, and Other Delusions, which is like a uh, – it's a it's a young love story. It's it's cute. It's good. It's a little quirky, but it's it was still worth the watch. Mm -hmm. And uh, another show I thought was actually kind of educational was a show called Cells at Work. Where basically it takes place inside the human body uh -huh. and all the the bodily parts like the red blood cells, white blood cells and everything are these different characters uh -huh. running around doing tasks around the body. And they're like, oh, this is – and they're actually like describing, hey, this is a red blood cell. Its job is to do this and that. See, this is a T cell. His job is to do this and that. That's what? that's that unusual like um, that – I don't know when this genre began, but it, but the burgeoning of it had to have been pretty recently – um, where the anime uh, is kind of like a half uh, informational storyline. Uh, that was kind of, Do you remember when I was talking about the uh, after school uh, dice club uh, a couple of months ago? I think yeah. so. The, the one that's on um, uh, Hulu, I think it was. That was basically the same thing, except it like referred to how real life board games were played. They didn't like 
they didn't like come up with like any sort of like uh, anime obfuscation, um, like uh, an anime alias for the board games. You know, they were like, they were actually like you saw pictures of like ladies and gentlemen and uh, and Catan and uh, what was the one that they actually had a whole episode about? Um, uh, the island that was another one, um, but it was all like in detail in the backgrounds. The 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 actual covers to these games and stuff, and they would like have one or two moments of each episode where they would talk about the rules and uh, how you would play and what the best strategies are. High Score Girl kind of does the same thing with that as well, um, but they've been doing that with uh, Cells at Work, which I, I had heard about from someone. There's also another anime. It might be too descriptive to invite mass appeal, but it's called um, Oh, what was it? Uh, Tell me, Galco Chan. I think. Let me let me make sure of this real quick. Uh, but I saw this entire thing because the person who suggested it to me is an unabashed pervert. And <laughs> oh, Diego. Uh, it, it could be. I'm not naming anybody, but um, is <laughs> please tell me, Galco Chan. It actually was, and it was somebody else. Oh, okay. But was he, it Tim? I'm pretty sure he might appreciate the shout out. No, Tim does not do anime because uh, he takes great pride in telling everybody how much anime he doesn't watch. Um, but it's the same idea, except it's a lo- it's a high school cast, and they all talk. It's basically such education, but in a slice of life comedy sort of format. So as you can imagine, a couple of episodes can become kind of like, huh? Is the FBI going to knock on my door any second? <laughs> <laughs> but it's not for those reasons. And they go into a lot of detail about um, about the human body and stuff in the same way that like cells at work does, just in a much less clinical in a much more le- lascivious way. Well, they they were putting like a kind of a humorous spin on it, like they were launching missiles up into the air and that was representing a sneeze yeah. from the human yeah. body. <laughs> the funny thing is, uh, the, the white blood cell and the red blood cell, mm-hmm. they become friends and they're walking around. Mm-hmm. And I, the boys and I were watching this and I'm like, you know what, this is kind of cute, it's educational, I think they might dig this. Mm-hmm. And then a, like a bacteria or a virus shows up and the white blood cell takes out a knife from his back pocket and slices the throat of the virus. Whoa! Like, blowing blood and guts everywhere. Like, okay, we're... we're <laughs> pause, <laughs> guys. <laughs> we'll come back to this some point, I promise. So, uh, and, like, a day later, they're like, yeah, Deb, we can handle this. So, apparently, sex and violence... Or, sex, no. But violence, yeah, sure. Yeah, we're all good. Go for <laughs> well, it. Well, that's the American way, isn't it? Yeah, of course. Yes. Yep. We saw you watching Witcher. They're playing Witcher, Dad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and uh, two other movies I had watched, like with the rest of the the nation, was on uh, Disney Plus. Uh, first, the the boys wanted to see Frozen two just to see what it was all about. I was like, all right, sure, I'll watch it. Mm-hmm. Oh God, just <laughs> the sing talking. Just I could do without that. The, the what? The, other the one, what talking? The sing talking. I thought you said the what? sink talking. I was like. There's a sync character in the game in the movie. There like, might have been. It's a creepy movie. I thought he meant it's that like st- maybe the streaming was so bad that all the audio was out of <laughs> sync and he couldn't take it. I probably would have watched that too. Or or that for some reason you you've gained like a newfound appreciation for vintage uh, Hong Kong film and can <laughs> only watch a movie if the English is off sync with the rest of it. No, that's my thing. That's your thing. Oh, okay. <laughs> I would definitely do that. The other movie I watched that was, of course, it was absolutely fantastic, was Onward. I haven't watched Onward yet uh, just because I – okay, so I know what the show's about. I know what it's about, and mm-hmm. I know there's some pretty heavy stuff in there about losing a parent. It's a Pixar movie. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, it's it's going to uh, rip your guts co- out. A and... couple weeks ago, I found a box with some pictures of my grandpa in it. And oh, was a mess uh, for about two hours, so I'm like, mm, I can't watch this yet. No, no. You, you need to wait. <laughs> no, I'm not. I am not okay with this. Um, want to see it, but not not quite there yet. I, I've actually been wanting to see it like like really bad. I couldn't. I forgot that it was coming out. That this movie was uh, was was going to be eventual because like the, unfortunately it like caused a controversy for for like a little while. Uh, because of the one gay character that shows up for like five seconds so that it can facilitate an easy cut for international markets. But people were like glomming onto it because I guess Disney was trying to like push that it was in there or something. But I remember seeing the trailer before, what movie did I see a little while ago? Um, ah, damn it. I I don't know what character you're talking about. I can't remember. It was a, it was a Cyclops or something that was like purple. And she literally shows up to say, Sup, and then leaves. 
like mentions that she has oh. a wife, and it was like, ah, it's cool, Disney, but it caused uh, controversy because people online are dicks, and you know that's how they get paid by pissing people off. So, whatever. Um, but I really like the trailer because it was like supposed to be kind of a modernization of uh, fantasy tropes, right? Like D and D fantasy tropes. Um, yeah. And I remember, I remember thinking, this looks fucking great. <laughs> So I was I was I was super keen to get on it, but then it became a Disney Plus thing because nobody's fucking going to the theaters right now. Why the hell would they? Um, and honestly, uh, nobody was really going to theaters before uh, there was an epidemic keeping people at bay. Anyway, yep. The golden age of cinema was fun, guys, but uh, I think we're pretty much. I think it's pretty much a vapor now. Which I'm ready for it to go straight to streaming. Really, every time now. that that makes me like profoundly sad though because. And there's something there's something special about going to the movies. There is. Yeah, there is. You know, you're talking to the guy that fucking wanted to buy an old theater in the middle of Indiana and, like, run that until he was retired. Yeah. And you might still get the chance. No, because nobody's going to fucking watch any movies in, <laughs> <laughs> in public. Here are the movies you want to show, and they might show up. Uh, yeah, well. Make it your own movie house. Make it my own movie house? Yeah, that's true. Honestly, that... I mean, the the idea still has so much appeal because there was a theater, there was a theater in um, uh, one of the neighborhoods that I used to live in in Indianapolis, right, uh, Irvington, um, that would that would like uh, show themed that would have themed entertainment per day, and they would show like um, they would show like old war movies on uh, Wednesday, like War Movie Wednesday or something. Thursday would be something. Friday was like anime, but they showed like the gr- the gritty old shit, like oh. the hard stuff. Yeah, Speed Racer. Uh, oh yeah, Speed Racer is just no fuck off. I mean, it was you know, they would show stuff like uh, Wicked City, and as much as I detest this movie, they showed like uh, the Overfiend once. It was funny. I came home and I saw that Ritsuka Doji, the Overfiend, on the marquee, and I'm like, oh shit! <laughs> uh, that almost caused an accident. Um. It was it was a really cool idea, um, and it, and what made it like double was that it was right across the street from the, uh, the 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 playhouse where they would show like live performances every weekend and stuff. And I was like, you know what? If you have if you have the uh, the energy, you can make that a hell of a double bill. Um, and that's kind of like one of my many little pipe dreams is like having a theater and to see like probably nobody's saying anything, but you know that that cinema or. Uh, uh, how do how do you put it? Just like cinema as as we knew it was a niche industry um, was grow was being diminished into a niche industry as uh, as it was. And uh, now that like literally nobody is going out, you know, to share like a condensed space with other people, uh, I don't see it surviving. I don't I don't see how it can. Um, no. At at the very least, there's going to be a massive <clears throat> reduction in in theaters to attend. Um. But I mean, you look at stuff like you know, and it's a bad example because it didn't do well at the box office. But mm-hmm. uh, like last movie I saw in the theaters is Birds of Prey, right? And and we went opening weekend, and there was five people in the theater. Ooh, you know, it's like, oh, this kind of sucks. It's a good goddamn movie. Had a lot of fun with it, but dude. I went to see, y'all know this. I went to see Bumblebee. There was literally nobody in the theater, and I saw it the day after opening. I was like, this is so depressing. It's it's an industry that has been reluctant to change for so long. Yep. Uh, and unfortunately, nature played its card for it. Yeah. So we'll see. We'll see what happens. I hope I'm wrong. I hope that that movie theaters live forever, and I get to go to movies for the rest of my life, and I'll be ecstatic to do so. But you know what the ironic result of this might uh, might end up being. Is that theaters closing down, but drive-ins outliving that? <laughs> There's drive-ins that have opened up up here. Yeah, because of because of this, where it's like you know we're going to show first run stuff on our drive-in, and no one has to get out of their car. Yep, nobody has to. Nobody has to like. Oh, excuse me, sorry. Who farted? Yep. Oh, I'm sorry. That was just me. Yeah, which was a reference to a movie that nobody saw. <laughs> <laughs> dirty work. But uh, no, dirty work's awesome. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I think, God, I, I don't even remember if this was before the quarantine or after the quarantine, but the last thing I watched as far as a movie goes was Knives Out, uh-huh. um, which I fucking loved and is on our shared voodoo. So you guys need to watch it if you haven't yeah, seen I it yet. Yeah, I need to see it. Okay, good. Yeah. Um, also on there, if you guys haven't seen it yet, Birds of Prey is on there. Mm-hmm. Um, Stuber is on there, which is a fucking riot. Uh, Stuber? It's uh, Dave Batista and Kumail Nanjiani. 
Of uh, that movie. It's fucking hilarious. <laughs> it is dumb as fuck. It is one of the dumbest movies I have ever seen. Turn uh, off your brain and laugh. I was in fucking tears in the movie. It was, well, you're I doing was a hell so of a job selling it. That's for it's, damn sure. It's wonderful. Batista's amazing. Mm-hmm. Nanjiani's great. It's it's wonderful. Uh, All right, and cool. W- well, I haven't seen it yet because I, I am working my way through the entire saga, and I'm in the middle of Clone Wars right now. Mm-hmm. Uh, Rise of Skywalker's up there, too, if you haven't seen it yet. All right. Um, All right. Even if you have, go ahead. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, So the main thing that I've been watching, just because I need... Uh, more short form stuff right now, just because of work's been so busy for me. Um, we're watching a lot of, uh, cooking stuff on YouTube right now. Um, because we're not so- other than how to drink other than how to drink. Yeah. <laughs> uh, because we don't, we just, I just can't, I can't afford to, to go out anymore right now. You know, we're, it's, it's a hell of a lot cheaper to just cook at home. Um, a fringe benefit of this whole entire situation. If there was one. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, and you know, for the first couple weeks, it was, we're just going to make the same old shit that we always make. Um, but after a couple weeks, it's like, I really don't want to eat that same old shit anymore. I want to try something Mm -hmm. new. Uh, and we discovered a channel called Sam, the cooking guy on YouTube and he's fucking fantastic. Uh, he's funny as hell. Uh, the mistakes are left in. So the shit he fucks up doesn't get cut out. So (laughs) it's, it's like watching, you know, cooking with us. Like we watched Uh one tonight where he was making corn dogs. Uh, like, and they were like upscale corn dogs and good shit. And he tries like, all right, I'm going to just try to do, uh, a cheese stick in corn and cornmeal batter. And he puts it in the deep fryer and it just fucking erupts. <laughs> and, he, and he's like, and he's, he's just bitching about it for the rest of the show. And it's fucking hilarious. It's wonderful. So Sam, the cooking guy is worth checking out. Um, we found a lot of really good recipes through there and really easy shit. Uh, he owns a restaurant in San Diego called not, not tacos where uh it's stuff where you know yeah he sells tacos but it's not just like yes i would like a chorizo taco it's stuff like i want a peanut butter and jelly taco or i would like a uh korean short rib taco with kimchi and and rice and stuff like that Ooh, that sounds good yeah oh like um uh taco china almost a lot like taco china yeah uh-huh okay uh so it's it's a great it's a great channel it's definitely worth watching he's really funny uh, and the, the stuff he makes is like next level flavorful and really mm-hmm. easy to do. Did I tell you about runny at any point? No. Runny was a channel that I more or less depended on when uh, I was on food stamps. Okay. Which is a great, uh, with what well, I was going to say it's a great place to be. No, it is fucking not. <laughs> um, <laughs> there was a lot of rice and uh, eggs being bought during those couple of months. Um, but, uh, he, he would, um, he would always, uh, do these, not fancy, but dishes that you wouldn't think to do with just the bare essential ingredients. And a lot of them were one pot, uh, one pot concoctions. Mm-hmm. Um, that was where, I, that was where I learned how to do like, uh, the fancy, uh, Chinese restaurant style version of ramen with tomatoes and such. Sure. Um, and, uh, and, and other simplified, uh, recipes like that. So when you're like trapped indoors and you're like scant on ingredients, that's another really good channel to watch. But he's been around for, he's been around for like nine years though. So I don't, yeah, I actually haven't seen him recently. I don't. I don't even know if uh, his channel's still around. <laughs> Maybe. Well, that's that's the one of the main things that Sam is doing right now is mm-hmm. uh, he's doing a series once a week uh, called Quarantine Munchies, where oh, nice. everything is either shit you have in your pantry or shit you have in your fr- in your fridge, uh, and like he he's done. Uh, ones where it's like the main ingredient is ground beef, the main ingredient is chicken, the main ingredient is ramen. Uh, oh, you know, so it's like, nice. here, we're going to do like he, the, we watched the ramen one tonight and he made a hamburger uh-huh. with ramen, like the ramen. He made yes. a bun, a bun out of the ramen, mm-hmm. which I was like, this is fucking great. This is amazing. Uh, and it's, it's all kind of shit like that where it's like, okay, this is, this is wonderful. And we've made like six of his dishes in the last couple of weeks and they're fantastic. Um, so yeah, that's good. Now cool. you, you said you haven't been reading Very too much, cool. Corey, right? Uh, well, I've been reading more than I've, uh, wanted to in the last year, at least because of my <laughs> jacked up fucking schedule, but, sure. um, at least I'm still getting into books again. Good. Um, so what have you got to throw at us? Well, Bob, you've been, you have been doing a thing on the channel called, uh, you, well, I don't actually remember what it's called, but it started off as 30 minute reads of me, uh, sitting down and reading the Hobbit. Yep. And then I looked at the chapters. And I'm like, if, the way Tolkien writes, mm-hmm. if I do this at 30 minutes a, a sit, I'm going to be here until 
Christmas. <laughs> so I, I decided, all right, one one chapter a night. We'll just read an entire chapter at once. And sometimes it goes 15 minutes. Sometimes it goes for over an hour. Sure. It all depends on the chapter. Well, I will I will be honest with you. Uh, I loved your idea and completely and unabashedly stole it for my own channel. Uh, <laughs> uh, More of my shit needs to be stolen. <laughs> uh, I've only do, I've only done one so far because I I don't have the patience to to read every day to people that aren't paying attention to me. So it's uh, <laughs> uh, it's why I'm Dude. not a teacher, kids. It's why I'm not a teacher. Just uh, just just get an OnlyFans and do a top list. Then you'll get people watching you. And now Bob's got ideas. <laughs> Uh, so, so I'm reading uh, Lamb, The Gospel According to Biff, Christ's Childhood Pal by Christopher Moore. Um, okay. That is such a good I, book. I never heard of this book before, <laughs> and I turned it on like halfway through or something. I'm like, is he reading like a biblical novel story? What the hell is this? And I then am. he just kept, Dude. Well, yeah, you are. It's But it's more on like the line of Life of Brian than it oh, would be yeah, like it's, something from the uh, New Testament. It's, uh, have, it, okay. Yeah, have, you, have, you, have you not read any Christopher Moore? No, I, I have. I, I this was brand new to this, me. This was his first exposure to Chris Moore. This uh, okay, yeah, he's he's totally your shit. Uh, I know yeah. I'm kind of speaking for you, but that's how confident. <laughs> yeah. So, Fair so here's here's the thing about this book, this book right here, this fucking phenomenal book. Uh, it is deliciously and just reveling in its sacrilegious nature, and it's <laughs> the most faith affirming fucking thing I've ever read. So yeah, so I'm doing I'm doing something w that I'm calling a chapter or two with Jay uh, on uh, on the uh, Square Pegs channel. I don't know when I'm going to get back to it. I haven't done it yet this week, but I'll do it eventually. <laughs> so far, you've delivered what you promised, a chapter or two. Yeah, I've done two chapters and a preface, in fact, so I've done more. Uh, but outside of that, I am reading a book called Every Tool's a Hammer uh, by Adam Savage, oh. which is fantastic. Um, and, uh, really kind of inspiring to get creative juices flowing. It's really good. And I am reading the Explorer's Guide to Wild Mount from Dungeons and Dragons 5th edition. Yay! Um, because, uh, I have a notebook with campaign ideas. So that's coming sooner than later, gents. Uh, yes. So not, not too soon, mind you, like not going to be in the next couple weeks or even the next month or so. But, uh, I, I would say... Probably within the next six weeks, we'll be uh, rolling dice to create characters for our our little little game here. Ugh, lovely. But uh, yeah, that's that's pretty much what I've been up to, and I think that's what we've all been up to, other than you know, not being dead. Yeah. Uh, which is yeah, that's nice. that's, that's, that's a plus true. side. <laughs> <laughs> or undead, for that matter. Or undead, yeah. Kind of like uh, <laughs> bringing it back to our previous discussion on uh, microtransgressions. Uh, so, uh, as always, guys, we do appreciate you being here and spending some time with us and, and listening to us uh, ramble, and specifically me ramble, because that was my gig tonight. Uh, <laughs> we do have a Patreon page. Uh, please do look it up. Uh, everything you can spare, and I know it's hard right now uh, with folks being out of work, but if you are able, if you're able to help the show out in any way, it does help us out tremendously. Uh, you can also go to our T Public site. Uh, it's at tpublic.com and search Cretans Guild as one word, and you can look for our new shirts. Which I have to throw out a quick uh, name drop here. Uh, Patsy the Angry Nerd, he bought one of our shirts recently, so he bought one of his champ our championship shirts. Nice. nice. And now he's Patsy the Adorned Nerd. He was he was yeah. the first he was the champion that took the belt off me the first time, wasn't he? Yeah, he was the first non Cretan champion. Okay, okay. I'm still sore about that. All right. Uh, <laughs> By the way, uh, I've been champion for a month now, and I haven't had a challenger yet. So yeah, we gotta think of something. That makes me the greatest of all time. You do. You do have a set of Transformers cards. Am I mistaken? Uh, I have. Yeah, I have no idea how to build a deck, but yeah, I've got a set. All right, we'll we'll, we'll talk. We'll talk. Okay. We'll have a training montage. Okay, that works. Mm -hmm. That works. Mm -hmm. uh, do follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and you can uh, find a link to our Discord in the description below, where we uh, basically me, Corey, Bob, and Adam talk. That's, 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 Goobs is on there every once in a while uh, says something about foreskin and goes away uh, <laughs> uh, perfectly normal yeah uh, follow Bob's uh, Disney or theme park or Orlando lifestyle channel, Skipper Bob's or book reading channel, <laughs> or book reading, or uh, hey, I got a pool channel. Uh, it's called Skipper Bob's Breakdowns. Uh, <laughs> all joking aside, uh, it is uh, the creative thing, honestly. That. Uh, I am most impressed with that any of us have done. And the thing I'm most proud of is to see you do that channel because I love mm -hmm. 
Uh, you pour your heart into it, and you do great work over there, buddy. So thank you for doing oh, it. Thank you. Um, follow me on Square Pegs, where I may upload a video once every six or seven weeks. I don't fucking know. Uh, <laughs> hey, it's quality, not quantity. Uh, th- yeah, I'll keep telling myself that. <laughs> uh, uh, I, I do think next week we're going to have another episode of Microtransgressions. Uh, so, gents, I would like you both on to talk uh, about. Actually, this uh, this one podcast kind of germinated an idea, so I would uh, I would be all about that. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So we'll we'll uh, we'll do something next week. Uh, Microtransgressions is my show. If you guys listen to it, awesome. It's a shorter form show than what we do here, uh, but it's Much. still it's fun. Much uh, less, uh, much less Harlequin baby. Yes, yes, yes exactly. Oh. Uh, <laughs> Isn't there enough evil in the world? Uh, so, uh, guys, this is this is the normal part where we say welcome to the guild. But tonight, uh, I'm going to say to all of our followers, new and old, wash your fucking hands. Yep. yep. And 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 call your parents. Say hi. Listen, if this uh, if this plague is going to take me out, I want to be the one guy that's like, hey, you know what? I'm glad he's gone. Thank goodness, because he was giving nothing to this. <laughs> he was giving nothing to civilization at all. This was a podcast of the Podfix Network. You can check out more shows like it at PodfixNetwork.com. I'm player one, Toby. And I am player two, Goose. And we are the Secret Levels Podcast. We are a very short, fast, and funny podcast about the classic video games that you love and some newer ones. We slam through them one episode at a time. We try to keep it within the 30-minute limit and keep you that fast and funny as we only deliver, folks. And we're going to touch on games from all different types of systems, from Nintendo to Sega to PlayStation. We're doing from 1942 to Zelda, because we're not counting numbers. Everything's a part of the alphabet here on this show. So check out our show on all the major podcasting platforms and follow us on Twitter and Instagram at Secret Levels Pod. Do that or get a game over, folks. <laughs>